Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of uh, Warmer 40k. I'm doing a bunch of interviews here. Uh, today I have uh, Jonty from Team New Zealand. Uh, I went over with him to WTC this year and we had an absolute blast. And I'm here to talk to him about his War Masters experience as he did very well. Welcome, Jonty. Hey, how you going? Yeah, good, mate. How are you feeling being back for a couple of weeks now? You've settled back in, jet lag's gone and everything? Yeah, jet lag was pretty quick to get rid of, but nice. um, the 300 plus emails I had with me, it's easy to get rid of. Yep, yeah, definitely going back to normal life is definitely a vibe. <laughs> yeah. Yep, nah, nah, fair enough. Okay, well, um, let's firstly, let's just talk a little bit about like yourself. How long have you been playing 40k for? Uh, I first started 40k um, when I was in high school, it would have been okay. like year 9 or 10, um, so gosh, I don't know, 13, 14? Yep, yep. It was probably when I got my first, first kit of stuff, got some Tau Fire Warriors. Very cool, very um, cool. Got some second-hand Tau models, but by uni I didn't really have any time left, so I just yep. put everything in my carry case and it gathered dust. Um, and then I kind of came back to the game, sort of early to middle night. Um, okay. Night uh, during lockdown, when I um, I, I discovered uh, the TTS Discord. Okay. Well, yep. Yeah. Yep. And um, just started playing a whole lot on TTS. Cool. And here I am, got back into it for for realsies. So yeah. I have heard through some TTS channels though that you are quite a known player through TTS now as well. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, That's yeah. to say. Um, uh, I think a lot of people, yeah, know, know of you, know you or know of you, since you played quite a bit of TTS, I think, by, yeah. by the sounds of things. So, yeah. Nah, yeah, I mean, cool. the, the reason I ended up um, really getting back into the, the modeling part of the game was because I beat um, Francis, uh, whose disc handle is Tally, on, yeah. um, in one of the Alpha League tournaments, which is the, okay. the tournament run by the Discord server. Yep. Um, yep. And he he just reached out to me and said, "Hey, look, you know, I I was gonna go to WTC, but um, I can't. Do you want to go instead?" And I right. said, "That's ridiculous." And then the wife said, "No, it's not. You should do it." And then that's yeah. how I got back into to the, the real life of so. That's amazing. It sounds like you have a very supportive wife there as well to say, like, "No, nah, you're doing this. You're going." So that's that's very awesome. Uh, very amazing. cool. That was for last year's WTC, correct? That was, that was yep. 2023. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, very cool. Very so cool. I, I started playing again in uh, December 22. Um, oh, sorry. I started playing like real life models again in December 22. Right. That's. And, um, it was, you know, then August obviously we've gone to, to WTC. So. It's very, very, very impressive because like. Uh, I have heard that some people playing on TTS ch um, transforming it to tabletop has been a bit of a struggle. Did you have any struggle going back to the tabletop, or were you more you understood the game and you just had to play your games? Yeah, I didn't have any issues. Yeah. Um, in, in fact, I, I'm I'm much of I'm the opposite okay. perspective on. That. I think that TTS is a is a great space to really lock down a lot of the skills that you want to use in the tabletop. Okay. I know, like some people are of the view that you know you've got these these tools. Um, like a good example is you know the measuring tool is very accurate. Sure. Yeah. Um, yep. And uh, you can put up aura, you know, rings on your models using the yellow sky scripting to basically show you know if you have a, a, a six inch aura, you know how far does that actually go out? You're not having to measure it. You can see the ring around your model. Um, likewise, you could put nine-inch rings up on people to, to yep. do deep strike screening. Yep. Um, so some people think you know that takes the thinking out of it. But okay. I'm a, the opposite. I, I think actually when you're when you're when you're doing that in TTS, you're thinking about hey, I need to be mindful of this aspect of the game, and so that for me at least that translates into when I'm actually playing for real. I'm still thinking, you know, like I'm not yep. putting up nine-inch rings. But I do need to measure nine inches. Yeah, yeah, and you can kind of visualize it differently. I, I do find TTS for myself is great for visualizing how things should look, and then mm. then applying that to like the actual tabletop. So, uh, very interesting. That's very cool. Like very impressive run starting in 
um, during lockdown and then what a year or two after is playing for uh, Team New Zealand is a very like a very impressive run from a competitive side so well done for getting on the team both years now yeah, very I, cool. I played a lot of 40k at that time. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. but it's, it's like, and that kind of proves one, like one thing that a lot of people preach, and including myself, is the more games you can play, the faster you'll get better at 40k. So, and like, I think you're living proof that you're one of the best players in New Zealand now, and you've just played a lot of 40k. So, yeah. Um, uh, very cool. Well, let's get on. So this whole interview is going to be about your War Masters experience. I'm going to try and get people on a bit later to talk about uh, the the WTC for Team New Zealand itself. And I might get you, yourself or some others back on, but I want to get a group of people on for that. I don't want just one person's uh, yeah. input for that. So specifically, uh, I played in the War Masters. I played four rounds. A bunch of the guys played um, a varied amount of rounds, uh, whereas uh, yourself, uh, Charlie Kang, the other coach, and Ben, the other New Zealand coach, uh, both played all six rounds. So we're going to go through your six rounds. I think Taos did too. I think I oh, Taos. yeah, Taos, yep. So, yeah, yeah. 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 Taos also went through all six yeah. rounds, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so since you, uh, spoiler alert, placed the highest out of everyone, I thought it would be uh, most interesting to get you involved in uh, uh, this video. Is if there was a shadow round, you would have been playing in it, which is uh, very exciting. Probably a little daunting to think about, but a uh, uh, very good run. But let's firstly let's dive into your list. So I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to flick it over to this, and hopefully, yep, this looks like it's recording correctly. Excellent. Cool. So yeah, so now I've got your list up here. So you took uh, Necron's Hypercrypt. Uh, yep. You just want to throw um, go through your list, and I will scroll down as it goes to the the things that you're talking about. Uh, so, Warlord, Silent King. Yep, so you got the Silent uh, King. Um, had a couple of caster characters. Uh, had a Overlord with Translocation Shroud. Yep. Uh, a Player's Mancer with the Arisen Tyrant Enhancement. Yep. A Chronomancer, a um, Hexmark, and a Royal Warden. Okay. I think those were the characters. Yep, yep, that looks right, correct to me. Uh, two times ten immortals, both with Tesla. Yes. Um, pardon me. I know I had a unit of five flayed ones. Yep. Unit of death marks. Yep. Um, two destroyers, just lone lone destroyers, uh, and two monoliths. Yeah. The 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 thing that made the list quite unique was the Silent King and two monoliths. The three big chunkies in the list definitely made that uh, quite daunting. I think for a lot of people to play into and not a list that i think a lot of players had actually played into which is quite interesting um is there any interesting notes you have on list like on your list build before we get into the the rounds or would you like to just get into rounds and we can talk about anything that comes up during the rounds um i mean i'll me briefly mention sort of some of the ideas behind the list sure um the 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 main idea with the immortal bricks is um, obviously anything that has inventory keyword in that detachment really benefits from the monoliths. Okay, yep. Because on paper I get three pickups because I don't have the enhancement. Sure, yep. But the reality is, you know, with, with the monolith eternity gate rule, I can bring two inventory units out, you know, one from each monolith each turn as well. Okay. So, you know, if you're, if you're three-inching a monolith, you're also bringing out a unit of immortals within six. Right. Uh, or can do, you know, um, you know, you can, I, I just find the more inventory, the better. Okay. Um, you know, there were some lists out there that I saw that were a little bit different. Some of them had tomb blades. Yeah. Um, other than had, you know, heavy destroyers with a risen tyrant. Yeah. Um, and they were good units, but I wanted to sort of maximize the synergy. Sure. Because I think the more synergy you have, the better, you know, all your units interact and, and that just raises the ceiling. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I understand that. Also, playing against this, I, I hate the Immortals with a passion, so I understand where you're coming from. Yeah. They're very tricky to deal with. Uh, the output of them is surprising, and the fact that you can put a lot of OC on an, a point that you weren't expecting uh, is uh, um, quite powerful. Yeah, and I mean, especially with the the combination between you know bringing them out and then using hyperphasic recall, which is the 2CP stratagem to pull them back to a monolith mm. after they've been attacked. Um, you know, the, the, the ability to keep them alive, to use them each turn, 
yep. um, without the risk of losing them. That's that's yeah a really big strength and why I think I would not ever consider dropping like you know two times ten models. Sure. Yep. At least not for that style, you know, that I was that I was playing with. Yep. Okay. Uh, anything else? Like, I'm assuming the silent the silent king was there to mainly buff the the two the two monoliths and give them more consistent shooting. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I think I think the math is something like a 33 percent damage increase. Wow. With a or a reroll one just to hit and wound. Yeah. Um, but it, it gives the monoliths a lot of reliability. Okay. Because you know, hitting on threes, you've got the death rays. And it's just, how many sixes do I roll? Right? Sure. Like, if you roll a couple of sixes, cool, whatever you're shooting dies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, it's a 420 <laughs> um, point reliability increase. Right. That's not cheap, you know? And I, yep. and I did try just triple monolith. Sure. But, you know, you are, when you're working with one monolith in three inch and getting to a really good position, mm -hmm. um, you want, you know, that the monolith that gets into the good spot to not work. Yeah. yeah. Um, so and that and obviously the Silent King brings his own damage. Sure. He brings um, a lot of really good melee. Yeah. Um, the aura doesn't super really benefit much else in the list. Okay. Um, the Arisen Tyrant unit is always your willing ones to hit and wound. Sure. Like at the very least. Yeah. Um, you know the 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 immortal block that uh, has the chronomancer is always yielding ones to wound, so mm -hmm. you only get ones to hit. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny on the hex mark. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we, uh, you know, hitting on two zeroing ones. Oh gosh, yeah. So, you know, he just yeah. he just becomes like, but like you know, for for the elves match, for instance, you you can't oh, really. Yeah. And go within 18 inches of him because he will kill most of the unit of aspect warriors. You know, like yeah. AP. String six, AP two, damage one, just kills elves. Yeah, very much so, very much so. Oh, interesting. Okay, yeah, I think definitely that the melee aspect this list doesn't have. It has some melee pieces in it, but no really he heavy damage dealer in melee. Whereas the Silent yeah. King can actually fulfill that role in a pinch if need be, right? Like, so I think having that threat is quite nice. I mean, the the being the being strength eight means you know he's not going up and, and one shotting vehicles. No. Uh, you know, like Space Marine Bodies, for instance, he's a nightmare. Yep. Strength 8, AP3, damage 2, yep. bye. It's good. Just, you know, yep. It's good, yeah. Um, and of course, having the ability to, to switch to ignore modifiers can be real clutch. Yes, the no um, minus 1 damage, uh, no half damage if you go into other Necrons with Katans and stuff like that, right? Yep. Like you, it, can, it, can, it, it adds up very quickly, I assume. Yeah, and I mean, we'll, we'll get on to it. I think I... I think I only actually used it once in War Masters. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the switching to ignore mods, and that was in the match that I had um, in round six against uh, the Blood Angels list. Okay. Um, the Lamartis brick, but we'll 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 get to that. Yep. Yep. I think it's the first time I used it, but it's such a good tool to have, right? Sure. Like, yeah. A lot of people are like rely on modifiers. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Well, the so, the, the new uh. uh uh, Dark Angels build, which has been said as one of the strongest Space Marine builds, is just overloading with damage, uh, minus one damage, right? So just being able to blanket ignore that, really good, especially with your um, damage three and uh, damage damage six probably doesn't really matter overly, but like even just getting the damage two through, so every two actually kills a guy instead of having to get four through, it's, it's a huge difference, right? Like, yeah, I mean, the, the, the Silent King himself, obviously, with uh, his eight AP32, you know, that, that is good against Terminators, mm. even if they've like, contended. Yep. Um, and you know it goes from you know, ignoring the the negative one damage on the the, the deathwing knights is, is significant because yep. then you only need two hits to you need two fail saves. Yep. You kill a terminator, he gets twelve attacks. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're you know, picking up most of a unit good. most likely, no, which is nice. Uh, yeah, yep. and it you know it really benefits the the death rays and the particle whips as well, mm -hmm. um, because it just means that the death rays. Uh, you know, more reliably one shotting a Terminator. Right. Yeah. Yeah. With a six plus one, you know, you need to roll a three. Or a, well, you know, if, if you're not ignoring mods, you need a four plus. Yeah. So one shot one goes to a three plus with ignore mods. Yeah. Just that extra, uh, extra little bit of consistency is just really nice to have, right? Like. Yeah. 
but it, the the particle ups especially you know where you have yeah. um their damage to dev wounds mm -hmm. that's that's the key you yeah. know the key tip is is keeping those at damage too right is very good Nah, cool. Well, I think, is there anything else you want to talk about list-wise? I think the monoliths somewhat kind of speak for themselves in a hypercrypt list. I think they kind of, like, you don't, you take hypercrypt because you want to be able to utilize monoliths well, and monoliths, I think, are fairly well-priced for what they what they do in a um, hypercrypt list. Yeah, I, I think, you know, my, my list, um, you know, the, the list that I took to ANZTC, for instance, was a different style. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and that was, I think, Thing, two balanced data slates ago so sure. it was it was the balanced data slate where they increased the price on the technomancer but not the rates that yep. particular update saw my list go up about 180 points wow okay that's significant yeah i mean that was double monolith um you know uh, 30 immortals um we had uh illuminator xeras had the nightbringer yeah you know we had all, we had a lot of units that went up in price um, yeah so I just took a different style. Mm -hmm. and, Interesting and then, how you adapted the list. You're like, no, this isn't like trash now because a lot of people when they get nerfed with 150 points, like, well, it's a complete rewrite now. Everything has to change. Where you're like, no, let's take out the pieces that are too expensive and work with like what I know works, which is I know double monolith is strong. I like immortals. How many immortals can I go to? Okay, 20 is the minimum, that, as you said earlier, that you're comfortable keeping. And then what else can I add to that list to make it still function as what I want it to do? Yeah, I mean, like if, if warriors had come down, there's a world where I swap one of the, you know, one of the the, okay. um, the immortal bricks for for a spot of warriors. You know, yep. any warriors is is still pretty hard to get get firm on activation. Sure. Um, you know, they have the same OC, they don't hit as well, but you chuck them in with the resin tire on plays monster, and you know you got you got the re rolls. Yep. People hits for else to hit. You're getting a yep. lot of save. Yeah. But. You know, the, the the issue with that is, you know, you've got AP one, and it's super easy to get cover from a that is, yes. uh, twenty one model strong. Yeah, um, there's going to be know, one model that's probably not shooting, right? Like, yeah, or or you know, like even just trying to like get every part of the enemy unit visible, like unless they're sitting out way in the open, it's it's tricky to do. Sure. Um, yep. So then you kind of want, you know, you kind of then want. Uh, other than the Xeras to buff them up to AP2, um, and now you're essentially just looking at the same style list that I had previously. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had Eliminator Xeras, but I also had a Cantharites to buff that AP up again. Yep. And suddenly you you hit an AP3 Tesla. <sighs> it's yeah. horrifying. <laughs> and it was less of that. Yes. There was no. Yeah. There was no big setup. Um, yeah. To combo buffs, it's now more, you know. Each of the tools kind of plays on its own a little bit more, mm -hmm. and, and Zaris just ties them in together. Yeah, just efficiently, um, uh, efficient data sheets, efficient points costs with uh, Zaris, who is on the more expensive side, but the buff that he gives to the other pieces that you need to be consistent, and the fact that he is also a beat stick himself, I think, yeah, really, it, it's a very clean list. Like, there is really not much space for anything to move in, in your list, right? You maybe, like, the flayed ones, death marks, and the destroyers are the own like it's what 150 points 200 points of like play you really have in the list in, in terms of like my my actions and yeah you're like well, what you could actually swap out right because if you, right, you want to yeah. keep the two monoliths you want to keep the two immortal bricks the characters attached to them and you want to keep the silent king realistically all that gives you left is those four units to um to move around like to swap out if you want you know if you wanted yeah. an extra flayed ones instead of death marks it's like that, that's kind of the flavor choice right yeah, and look, I, I did, I did tweak my list fairly close to the submission. Yep. Um, in that I was running um, a single destroyer. Okay. Uh, two units of death marks. Okay. And I didn't have the um, hex mark or the royal warden. Okay. Um, so there was. Yeah, there were two units of uh, it's, it's something like this. Two units of death marks. Sure. Yep. Um, and I had the uh, enhancement for an extra pickup before pickup. Okay. Um, but I had a conversation like basically David um, came and we had a game um, fairly close towards the end and talked a little bit about 
you know, what in my list I, I felt I needed to keep you know, definitely mm-hmm. and what could change. And it was kind of like, this is the locked in stuff, yep. which is the stuff we talked about. And, sure. You know, all my chair for my objective screen units, you know, so the stuff that could go. Um, and I was running a regular Overlord as well. Okay. Um, because I, I quite liked having the, um, the site. Okay. Which is, you know, it's a it's a different profile from the Overlord's Blade, which the which the translocation shrug guy has to have. That's four attacks on twos at eight, three, two, dead ones. Okay, not bad. Uh, but the but the Void Scythe is three attacks on threes at twelve, three, three, dead ones. Yeah, just having that damage three so profile is quite nice, right? Yeah, it's more for vehicles and stuff. And yep. a lot of the time, I am charging those kind of units in to tie up enemies. And so. Oh, okay. Having, yep. you know, just having that um, that that void scythe in there was was quite nice. Cool. Okay. Um, as it turned out, it was the right move to swap it out. It never really hurt me. So excellent. Cool. Better we could do. David had some good yeah. ideas just to take things up a little. Well done, David, for being able to convince you to change something. This is David Gaylard from um, Team New Zealand and uh, Team Ignite in the UK. So yeah, um, he he knows a thing or two. I'll, I'll give him that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ah, cool. Well, uh, if that's the end of that, let's go on to your Warmaster's performance. Uh, so, round one, uh, you played against Nick Kiever with his Leagues of Votan. How do you feel before the um, talking about the round? How did you feel going into the round? How do you feel? Like, how does Leagues feel as a matchup for you in your list? Um, so, it's it's good. Um, obviously, with Judgment tokens, he goes. Monolith, Monolith, Silent King. Sure. And and then the question is, where does the fourth token go? And it's on one of the Immortal Bricks. Okay. The right decision is to put it on the 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 Chronomancer Overlord Brick. Okay. So I, normally I run the the Overlord with the Chronomancer Squad. Sure. Normally. Very few circumstances where I'll swap that round. Okay. There are some. But I think for the purposes of, of War Masters, the... Um, the Overlord was always on the um, Chronomancer book. Okay. So he tokened that one, which was, you know, they said the right call, because mm-hmm. their negative one to hit uh, innately, and, you know, all his stuff that ignores stealth, like the searchlights, they don't nice. apply to no one to hit because it's not stealth. Yep, yep. Nice. So, um, so the, the, the Judgment token gives the plus one to hit back. So it kind of nullifies your minus one to hit. So at least you're still hitting on fours instead of hitting on fives into that. Because that's quite brutal for um, BS4 armies. Me being a tower yeah. player, I understand when it's minus one to hit so you don't have hit mods. Uh, um, ignore hit mods. It it really hurts. So like I understand that. that very much. Yep. Um, and plus the, the Plasmancer unit is normally killing stuff anyway. So it's going to get its own problems. Yep. yep. But... Um, yeah, like it, it's it's a matchup I've played a few times, um, and he didn't have any hecatons. Uh, okay. Memory, I think. I think that was no, I'm mistaken. That was the Leagues of Otan list I I played later. Oh, okay. So I think this list was ten half guard, a bunch of Sagittor, a bunch of Berserks, um, some Jaegers, that kind of stuff. Yeah, this is uh, six Sagittors. Uh, Three units of Berserks, one unit of Terminators, one land fort, and one unit of three bikes and Jaegers, and then characters to finish it off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, it's it's a matchup I'm familiar with. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the biggest weaknesses of Votan are obviously the short range, mm-hmm. and they don't go very fast. Yep. But all my stuff is 24 inches range, so I'm, I'm if I can shoot them, they can shoot me. Sure. Um, so it's really more about, you know, going for pickoffs in that kind of match for a little bit until okay. you kind of get it below that level of damage where he can slap you hard enough. And then, I mean, that's a common thing. You'll find that's a common <laughs> thing. In how I play sure. Yep. Yep. You play a little bit cagey for the start. You get some easy resources. You get some trading. And then once the sort of damage threshold is below a particular level, you can go in and clean up. Yeah, very similar to um, how Grey Knights play, right? They pick around the edges. Oh, you don't have a yeah. thing that can deal with Dread Knights anymore? Cool, now we'll go in. Or vice versa. Oh, you don't have a thing to deal with Terminators anymore? Cool, let's go in with the Terminators. And you just, you're waiting out that game until that, that point, that, yeah, that um, threshold is hit. And then you're like, cool, everything goes in now. And then you just play the game from there. 
Yeah, yeah and, and especially with the um, word I can't remember. Um, anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, so so the the match went um, kind of how I expected, and mm-hmm. at least in terms of how I planned. Right up until the point where he just one tapped the monolith with a unit of berserks. Oh, okay, good. Yeah, I think, well, I think I think maybe it was on like eighteen or nineteen health or something. It, it had been scratched. Sure, um, sure. And he just got five zerks into it and um, just popped it. Very good, right. very good. Obviously, he doesn't he doesn't spend for the bonus AP because then I just spend for a four up and bottom and we're back to saving on fours. Yeah, uh, but he dropped like for a hitting on threes, wounding on fours. He dropped like three out of sixteen attacks or something. Yeah, and I, yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. I guess I died here. <laughs> and I quit. Yeah. Um, to yeah. the, I, 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 I was one failed save over what would have killed me. Oh. So there was no a second year I wouldn't save yep. me. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah. Oh well, that's life. Yep. Um, it looks like the uh, game was very drawish in the end, like like eleven yeah, ninety. Yeah. Obviously, this is differential yeah. scoring, so. Uh, you were at least six points ahead on score, uh, six to ten points ahead on score, right? To get the yeah. eleven nine, so very very close game, all in all. It was it was much it was closer than I than I would have thought it would have been going in. He played okay. quite well. Yep. Obviously, as I mentioned, there are a couple of big swings, um, but uh, I mean his his style of Votan list, um, while it isn't as good on the damage front. Is good on the is better on the scoring front because okay. guys and cars is just reliable scoring. Yes, yes. Because um, you have to kill the car and then you have to kill the guys. Because mm-hmm. normally the guys will come out onto the objective and you have to shoot them off too. So you know you're activation locked and yeah. So especially with a list like yours, right? Like you only have so many activations. Like yes, you can split fire with a, yeah. a monolith, but you only have a, a few guns on there that you can really. Um, guarantee to kill things if you're split firing and then you're also leaving yeah. yourself open to then not killing anything and then you're in a worse position than you started yeah like so so turn one i um i i think i went first in this game yep yes i did um basically he had a he had scouted sagittar to a place where the silent king could move far enough forward so that he and one of his men here could shoot a sagittar okay Okay. Um, and so I was like, "Cool, that should kill it, right?" The death, the death ray, um, plus his, you know, good guns. Yep. And I think I was putting the indirect into the the um, the Jaegers most of the time um, mm-hmm. until they died, but um, did did like no damage to the Sagittar. The other thing I was thinking is, well, like based on where I was moving to take those shots, he would be able to move guys up and punch the king back, but it would mean shifting like his land fort and like at least three sagittars over quite hard to one flank okay uh, which is what he did hmm. um which i love because then i'm like oh now i can top over here and pick off these units and then be in safety and now all the stuff that you've got over there if it wants to come over it you know has to take turns to get there and yep so getting getting your opponent to commit with slow units to one particular area on the board uh is is really effective sure. uh, for hard script because you're wherever you want to be and they they have to walk so yeah makes total sense but, yeah but overall I, he didn't make any mistakes that i, I really capitalized on mm-hmm. um you know he was a he was a really good player and and um yeah obviously it was the first round of the tournament so i was still warming up a little bit yeah um but yeah no i was i mean i it was very close to not winning the game sure very yep. close yeah, yeah, a six to ten point difference is, you know, one set of cards bad and he scores cards a little bit better than you or flips a priming accidentally and that's a draw or a slight win to him, right? Like, uh, very well done and a nice way to start the tournament off, you know, first to six rounds and you like you start off with a win, even if it's a small win, still a win, a win's a win. So like, nice, yeah. like, nice feeling, you know, the jitters are kind of gone a little bit now. So like, very cool. So like, on to your round two then. Well, this is just loading up for a second. We have... Da, 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 da. My internet is choosing yeah. now. Are uh, uh, you into? I do not know how to pronounce his names, but you're into Imperial Knights. I don't know how to pronounce that name either. I'm going to give it a go. Guliami. <laughs> yeah, Gu- Guliam was uh, with his uh, Imperial Knights. Uh, yeah. I feel like just from my side of things, Imperial Knights is probably a sh- 
good matchup for you. You have a lot of high damage um, shots, like a lot of high damage shots that can come out. So you can pick up multiple small knights a turn quite easily. And as long as you, were, um, you are mindful of the melter range of the armages, you're probably in a fairly safe position. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the issue with the the armages though is for me to shoot them, I have to be within twenty four. Yep. They make twelve. Now they're within twelve. Sure. Um, so, you know, like I I can play KG. I can try and use terrain to my advantage. Mm -hmm. but <coughs> this this particular game, I felt confident going into. Okay. Um, so he had three big knights. He had a lancer. He had Canis. He had a crusader with mysterious guardian. He had uh, two Halverins and one Warblade. So... Okay, yep. The Halverin anti fly is annoying for the Monoliths, sure. but also for the AP1. Don't yep. really cover, so typically I'm saving on twos. Yep. Um, he can pop that up to like AP, AP2, so I'm saving on threes in cover, it's still fine. Um, but essentially, um, I think I got... I think I got first turn again on this one. I got first, first turn a lot, uh, which is a pain because I obviously like to go second. Sure. Um, yes, because uh, for people um, wondering why, if you go first, you can't pick up at the start of your opponent's turn because your opponent hasn't had a turn yet. Whereas if you go second, at the end of your opponent's turn, you can pick up three units and then on your turn one, drop them down where you want. Correct? Yeah. 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 So, so basically you're playing Hypercrypt from you know, the start of the first battle round. Yes, yeah, you get an extra turn of extra movement, which is just great, right? Yeah. But you can't, you can't yeah, and, play, and play and it. And end of game scoring is fantastic. Yes, um, yes. And, and a lot of matchups, end of game scoring is significant. I think that's one thing people noticed from WTC this year, was going second, there was often like a, a potential five, you know, a, what like one differential point difference just from going second, because you got that extra little bump in... Um, primary and even potentially secondary, just being able to instantly score secondaries. Like if you get yeah. turn, uh, turn <laughs> five, recover fine. assets is just delightful, yeah. right? Because you're like, oh cool, I don't actually have to survive, I just complete it. So, yeah. um, ah, cool. But so essentially, in this in this match, you know, it's the kind of gun line approach. Um, I think he started with the Crusader and Reserve. Mm -hmm. um, the Lancer was quite far back. Canis was sort of on one flank. And he had some henchmen with Cotiers in a building. Um, and essentially, my turn, my turn one, I just kind of moved up and staged. Mm -hmm. His turn one, um, he moved up uh, Canis in, onto an objective. Okay. He moved, like, and then kind of did some staging himself. Um, so then I had set up on my turn two both monoliths and the Silent King to shoot, <coughs> pardon me, either uh, the Lancer or Canis Rex. Okay. Uh, and, and for me, in the position that I was in, the Lancer was the bigger threat because where Canis was, there was no realistic way he was moving and charging. Right. But the Lancer goes further and there weren't terrain features that would have moved blocked him from a charge. So the okay. plan that turn was kill the Lancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I dropped the player's mancer, a mortal brick. Actually, this was a match where I used the translocation overlord shroud guy in. Oh, did I? I can't remember. <laughs> Maybe I, he was. He was one of the teams. I, yeah. I actually think he probably wasn't the current squad. Thinking about it now, but yeah. anyway. Um, but I I dropped both units of immortals out, and I'm like, cool. They'll just shoot Tatus okay. because you know. Like, the Lancer wasn't on an objective, it was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. So they, so the Arisen Tyrant unit um, popped off and did, like, six damage to Canis Rex or something. Nice. But, you know, and, and for a whole lot of strength, five um, damage, one AP mil shot, that was pretty good. Yes, not very much so. <laughs> and that was after the, the Feel No Pain. Nice, um, yep. And then I shot the second Immortal unit at, at Canis as well, and then I did a couple more damage. So Canis was like almost half health before okay. I was firing the monoliths and the Silent King. And so I was like, well, I mean, adept improviser the <laughs> Sure. Sure. Um, and ultimately, I, I, I don't know whether that was the right call. Obviously, like everything worked out. Yes. Um, but so I shot a monolith 
and the Silent King into Cadus to kill him. Okay. And then I had a Monolith left, which I put into the Lancer and just did zero damage with it. Mm, that's um, the way it goes. Just, yeah. Put your involves yep. and then okay, anyway. Yep. Um, but I think I think that was quite risky to do because I knew Kanus wasn't a threat to me that turn. Yes. But you know, getting the damage that I did on him, I mean, he's a threat and that he can move out and shoot me with his laser gun. Yeah, his gun is. can also just pop off, right? The crits on yeah, fives, like. Okay. Um, but the but a but a lancer getting in and killing because we are we are to to set everything up how I wanted it. The Silent King was actually quite exposed. Okay. And so uh, it was a bit risky um, doing mm-hmm. that because, you know, of course, if he kills my Warlord, he gets the Five Inferno Pain. Um, yep. But I was like, this turn we're going to go for crippling damage. And, yep. um, you know, I, I know what the math is. It should be good. And, yeah, so we um, we changed to Canis. Then his his only real counterpunch was trying to shoot me up with a Crusader. And um, the Lancer came out, charged the Silent King. Um, he put no shots into it to kill the Menhirs first, which I think was a mistake. Yep. Because it meant that the Lancer was charging into the Silent King with both Menhirs. As it was, he gave me five saves, and I passed all of them. <laughs> the dice be dice sometimes, just, right? Like... Oh, crap. Okay, cool, we're fine. <laughs> and then, of course, the Silent King takes back. He's got lethal hits. You know, he's got like, three... Yep. Yeah. So I think I did play about eight damage to him on the oh, that. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. 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 So then um, I think I think by the end he had killed. He got one of the monoliths with the Melter from the Crusader. Yeah. And then Makes enough sense. magic came up and finishing it. But by that point I was like, well, I'm happy to trade, you know, a monolith to mm-hmm. push the differential. Yes. Uh, I remember I used the Plasmancer unit to just drop in and just glass his home objective. Oh, okay. Um, killed killed the henchman and Cotiers like nothing. Yep. And then um, I was just kind of like, oh well, I guess I'll yellow charge them into this halvern that's nine inches away because I just come out straight through from the, um, the three or something. They they nail it. They get Good. into this um, this halvern. I'm like, well, cool. I'll just roll the players' mind, so I don't care about anything else. And I think I did no damage. I, I practically did no damage, but it was you know you tie him up, he yep. can't fall back. Yep. And then taking a minus one to hit if he's shooting something. Yeah, nah, excellent. And then, and then I will just teleport to an eternity gate next turn anyway, so... <laughs> oh, very good. Very nice. So it felt like you were in control of that game from the get-go, with a little bit yeah. of luck from, obviously, the Lancer bouncing. But with both many you shouldn't... You, should, you might lose both many but you shouldn't lose the Silent King as well, so... Uh, That's right, yeah. yeah. I think... And I, and I think it focused by the Silent King. I kind of realised after I'd done it, because... You know, like as I said, with the plan to kill Canis, um, well, I put the Silent King in a place where it was like, if the Lancer doesn't die, he's kind of in a bit of danger. Yep. And, then I, and then I was like, oh, cool, let's shoot Canis. So, I mean, as I said, like, it could have gone badly, but I was I was lucky in that instance. Right, no. Uh, very cool. Well, well done. And obviously you got um, at least, what, 55 points that game, um, differential, because you got the, the 20 so... After a nice yep. little close win, you got a very comfortable big win here. Well done yep. to you on that one. And we'll push into your round three. So last round of uh, day one. So yep. feeling good. couple of wins on, in your pocket. Yep. Um, and how was this? So this? This one was on stream, was it not? Yes, yes, yes. it was. So War Games Live? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So this is a Florian uh, with his yep. Chaos Space Marine list. Okay. So I saw this match up, and I said to Finn, to win this match, all I have to do is show up. Oh, okay. Finn's our yeah. captain, by the way. They team, team <laughs> captain for Team New Zealand. So, and, and, you'll, and you'll, of course, you'll see it ended up as a 10-10. Yes, um, yes. So essentially, we, we, we both fucked out 10-3. Um, okay. And it was my job. Sure. So, and, you know, as I said, like, I, I play a little bit cage or pick off normally obviously i didn't in, the, in that ik game i was like okay we're gonna try and kill you now mm-hmm. but um this particular csm list was like two occult uh it was um pack bound zealots yes so it had the map. um i remember it had like i think three units of bikes noodle bikes yep three um, units of bikes yep two units of accursed cultists three yep. units of normal cultists <laughs> uh a few characters two vindicators uh, a rhino, some nurglings, that looks about it. And obviously the um, dark communes to go with the um, accursed coldest blobs. 
you say warp talents? Oh, sorry, one second. Yes, one unit, one unit of 10 warp talents. Yep, I skipped that. 10-man ten ten slanesh warp talents. Yes. So in, in this matchup, the, the, the two threats to me are the warp talents getting into immortals. Sure. Um, anything else like the accursed cultist brick, sure, if you get a swing with the whole unit into a unit of immortals, I'm not super happy. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Normally it's fine. Yep. Like they they have an AP problem, you know. Um, and I, I'm I'm still minus one to hit on the Chronomancer unit. Um, but in return, I can do a lot of damage to those units. Okay. Um, and the Vindicators threaten the monoliths. Yes. Uh, yes. Strength fourteen. Uh, and as it was in that game, he did get one of the monoliths by by the end, which was halfway through the game yes um but again it, it served its purpose mm-hmm. um so um i think i went first again on this one for memory okay uh, unfortunate three times in a row yeah uh and we kind of skirmished a little bit i think for the first two turns on the objectives um and then i saw an opening on turn e two. oh so no, so turn two, I think I did a clever thing where um, he charged a unit of his uh, accursed cultists into some flayed ones with mm-hmm. the intention that he would then pile into like the rear part of the immortal brick. Um, okay. When he finished that charge, I heroically intervened with that immortal brick so that I could get the overlord swinging. Um, if I had thought more about model placement sort of earlier, I probably wouldn't have needed to do that because if he had tagged him, they'd go for the swing anyway. But, um, yep. but I hadn't. So I used the heroic intervention to get him up so I could epic challenge the um, the leader, the, you know, the... I don't know what the model's called. Um, the head cultist and the... Uh, the da- yeah, the, the leader of the dark commune because they are specifically still have the character keyword so you can still precision them out. Yes, and they're also the one that gives the unit the 5-up uh, pinball. Yes. And that goes, it's a lot easier to kill that unit. They just melt. Um, yep. And I like to do it with death marks. You know, if you shoot five death marks, normally they get them. Uh, oh, okay. Yep. But, Interesting. Um, I didn't, re- I didn't have really an opportunity to do that with the death marks this game. Um, okay. So that, that was a good play. And then I and then I won eight and did a really stupid play. Where <laughs> spent probably close to, I don't know, would have been maybe like 20 minutes planning this um, play where I could get my uh, Arisen Tone Tesla squad out to shoot his second Accursed Cultist Brick, but um, I would have some death marks further back where they would be blocking a rapid ingress for some warp talons, and I hum and hard for ages about how close I want them to be, what kind of surge distance he would need to get into that unit, because when you... Yep. Obviously, if you shoot the accursed cultists and you damage a model, they can surge. They have a blood surge. Yep. Yep. Um, and I want to keep shooting them so they can't be in engagement range. Um, All right. But I couldn't bring out the Arisen Tyrant unit if there's a threat that he can rapid ingress the, the warp talent and kill them. That, okay. That's a, it's a key resource I needed to get through all this chat and stuff. Yep. Um, so... Um, and, and screening, spending heaps of time and effort screening for where I expected his Orkton would go. I left this great big hole <sighs> even yep. further forward in a better position. Mm. And I was like, ah, yep. oh, whoop. Yep, um, sometimes you can do that to yourself though, right? You, you're trying to plan for every yeah. outcome and you just can't actually plan for every outcome. You just have to choose, okay, this is, this is, I'm going to make my bed and lay with it here and this is what you're going to have to do. And yeah, it's, it can be very tough though, like, um, like especially like with tower rapid ingress is one of the things that can ruin, ruin me quite heavily. You're also a tower player, so you understand this as well. And the amount of times, like, how many resources can I give up to make sure that I just don't get rapid ingressed on is always a question, pretty much from turn one onwards. Um, what yeah, you're willing the, to do? The, the warp tones, you know, they they will typically kill a unit of the mortals without you know, yep. much difficulty. Um, as it as it transpired. Um, we we glassed the um, the accursed cultist prick that I was aiming for. So by that point, like both his accursed cultist prick were gone. I killed like two units of cultists, 
I had killed like I think all the bikes. Um, it was looking pretty good, and then, um, and then yeah, he does a shepherd ingress. We shoot the uh, silent king indirect into it. We do three damage. Uh, we kill one. I mean, that that's good. Like, yeah, got sure. Twelve shots on four, zeroing ones to hit and wound, wounding on three, saving on three. Okay. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Three damage. Sure. We're like, yeah, that's 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 good. Okay. Um, okay. And then he moved that unit up to charge into my Chronomancer Overlord brick, which had I think seven immortals at the time. It had taken okay. some damage um, from other stuff shooting it. Sure. Um, and I um, he rolled his dark pact for the uh, the Spanish Warp Talons, and they failed. He took three mortal wounds, which killed the damaged guy and another. So he was down to seven models in the Hawk Talon unit. Uh, yeah. And then when he, and then obviously with the with the new rules for them, he didn't get the sustained fives and the sixes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so when he swung at me, he's minus one to hit, sustained sixes, wounding on fours, twin link, AP two. I had one mortal, a uh, one immortal, and both the characters left alive. Wow. Yeah. And one immortal is. A good number of models to survive yes, with. Yes, because then you can reanimate, you can do all your tricks, right? Like, yep. That's right. You know, um, they start coming back. Mm -hmm. So, um, the other immortal unit wasn't so lucky. Um, I was running a little bit low on CP. I was spending more than I really liked that game. Um, so I couldn't recall the Plasmancer unit, and they ended up getting beaten to death by some... Um, he just basically, not knowing that I couldn't teleport, he lined up some stuff to kill. Sure, yeah. Um, did, and the uh, Vindicators popped off into a monolith, took it down to like five wounds or mm -hmm. something. Um, then he grenaded it, did like a, I want to say like a five damage grenade. Oh, no, the five damage grenade took it to five. Right. Then charged it with a Chaos Lord and some Chosen and then yep. killed the monolith. Do it, yep. So at that point it was like, the objective that was secure was the one I had a monolith on and my um, my overlord unit that was safe. He had nothing to threaten that anymore, so we started to push into his. Um, killed the warp, you know, killed the warp talons, killed the chosen, yep. um, and then he, like an absolute chad, overwatched the silent king with one of his vindicators as the silent king moved up to basically go contest his objective for a turn and kill some Excellent. stuff over there. Yeah. Um, Rolled two sixes oh. uh, on his vindicator, so he got four hits because he died, picked up for sustain. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, I failed two saves, and I was like, oh, okay, roll the first one, five damage. Oh, that's a min here done. Yeah. Um, odds of him getting another min here pretty low. I won't re-roll the second save, five damage again, so both min here killed right. off, yep. which was not great um, yep. because we needed them to kill the vindicators. Yes, yes. Um, but essentially, it was it was not long after that that we that we timed out. I had um, the silent care. I had every objective, and mm -hmm. um, I could have taken a secret mission as well. Sure. Um, so basically, we were in a position where we were playing cleaner, but would have been playing cleaner, and um, getting a secret mission and nailing the secondaries from that point on because he had just like a cultist. He would have had like a cultist brick left and like a vindicator. Sure. Yeah. And there would have been no way to stop me from scoring, you know, the the the, the sixteen points turn four, yeah, and uh, eight uh, points turn three, yeah, and oh, so yeah, taking a no. you wouldn't have even needed a secret mission, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, it, it was like it was pro if the game went to full time, it probably would have been more favour towards you. But as the game had yeah. to finish at round three, because that's you know, yeah. that's that was the rules that WTC had for War Masters. Uh, ended up as a as a draw, it's which is a pity, yeah, yeah. but it's still not a loss. Which is still, you know, like that would have been, it would have been a yeah. much, it would have hurt a lot more, I think, if you both had timed out and you had lost the round. So I think that's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, I think it's it's fair. Like if you both used up your time, a, a draw is always a fair outcome, right? Like, yeah, it, look, it, it it was, and and um, um, he he felt really bad about us running out of time. Because, you know, he said, look, you were, you were about to start running away in points. Yeah. You know, like, it was absolutely your game. Um, 
Uh, but look, you know, we, we it's on a chess clock, right? Mm. He, I have my time, he has his yep. time. I think at one point, like it was, uh, yeah, uh, I think at one point it was on me for a little bit extra, but there wasn't an yep. incident thing. Yep. Um, and the, it, was, it was funny because the stream guys had said to us, you know, look, the last two games we've had on stream didn't finish. We need. We really want you guys to finish your game. <laughs> oh gosh. Player, but you know, looking at the matchup, I was like, I yeah. should be out of it. Oh, oh well, um, is what it is, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. I just spent uh, like, yeah. Sometimes I spend far too much time just looking at a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, before before implementing a solution. Sure. Uh, and I'm yeah, like I'm a slow player, but. Getting faster on the clock is something I've been trying to work on. Sure, yeah. At least since day one, so. Uh, it's, yeah. it, there's always something to improve on, right? For e- everyone in this game, e- even the top players in the world, there's always things that they can improve on, right? Like, let's say, yeah. critical thinking, t- like time, all sorts of different things, you know, just understanding other data sheets. There's always something you can be improving on, so I don't think it's anything negative on anyone, like, especially at the world stage when you're playing those games there's a bit more stress especially you're on stream as well so there's that extra level of stress you're mic'd up you've got lights all around you there's people coming constantly coming over to watch you and you have to make sure everything that you say is you know correct and all the stuff so you have all these extra stresses on yeah. a game like that as well i mean it was also like the 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 computer system we were using to do our secondaries and stuff was was better than last year yep. still a little funky. we had to play with that for a little bit okay. um and like one of the things that I do to save myself a lot of time is I'll rack up my dice. Yes. If you if you come and look at my table, yes. you will see one hundred dice of varying colours. Yes. In rows of two by five. So I have ten dice that I can grab. Yep. Ten dice, ten dice, ten dice. So I'll I'll set my dice up like that. I couldn't really do it on stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I started to, but it was it was harder. Um, For sure. So I didn't have the space. And the the box you were rolling dice into is like kind of like in the middle of the table under a camera so i feel like lean over. yeah it's um, very it, awkward that dice box is in like a it was, it was is a rough awkward. position <laughs> yeah right. but i mean look at, at the end of the day what, what killed my time was was my indecision yep. not you know, fair cost me maybe a little bit of the time having to roll dice slightly differently but it wasn't what you know made the difference so yeah fair but still, at least undefeated day one is a good feeling. Obviously, yep. a draw doesn't take you out of contention uh, for podiuming or anything like that. Uh, if you get a loss, you're basically out. But a draw, you're definitely still in it. You just have to push a bit harder yep. in your next games, right? So uh, we had yeah. a good we had a good rest that night, and we have uh, round four the next day. So round four was into uh, Antonio. Mejias and his Dark Angel. Okay. So I know Antonio from Discord. Oh, interesting. Okay, cool. So I've played him a few times in Alpha League. Yes. He goes by 20X. Okay. Uh, so, I, yeah, so I, I've played him before. Very uh, cool. And <laughs> before we started, he like uh, he's like, let me take a recording, and he like, yeah. you know, selfie Very cameras cool. himself in the background. He's like, I'm here playing Demi Socialist John Tex. You know? Awesome. <laughs> I just can't yeah. Play. Um, oh, very cool. Was like, oh, it was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, very cool. It's, hey, it's, it's cool being able to play these people that you don't usually ever get to play against in real life, right? Like this person that you've played against multiple times from Switzerland, I think. Yeah, Switzerland. And yeah, now you're actually getting to play him physically. That's like a pretty awesome thing to be able to do. And it, you know, I understand her wanting to celebrate that fact, you know? Like that's, a, that's a, an amazing thing about this hobby, especially playing it at this level. That, you get to like meet these people and yeah yeah it's very cool so um so his list was two units of deathwing knights one with maces one with swords okay uh, he had two lances he had the Ooh. apothecary biologist um eradicator squad yep. in a i think it's the impulsor uh, repulsor 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 yeah the one with the gun on top right uh, it's the one you can get back into yep, 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 when you get charged. Yep, yep. Repulsor, yep. Yeah, cool. Um, and, you know, then he had uh, Azrael and some inner single companions. Yep, very nice. And then um, some some other trading pieces, I think. Yep, yep. he had an inner circle uh, t- um, unit with the six, the six Terminator-esque yep. models. For, uh, yep, very, very stereotypical for the, the Dark Angels kind of list. It has, yeah, the... 
the eradicator brick which is probably very scary for you because that just picks up a monolith yeah, instantly yeah uh also the lance is not as scary since low volume of fire you can pop that four up in vol and you can or well, probably don't even need to because uh, ap3 yeah yeah so that all you need to do is roll a four up and you're probably all right so yeah, right. Yeah. No, very nice. All you gotta do is roll four ups. So, okay. <laughs> 40k is easy when you're rolling four ups, right? <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so how did this game go? I was I was worried about the match. Because um, okay. on paper, he's got some really good anti tank. Yeah. Just fantastic anti tank. Um, and also, the. Um, like, he's got a unit of assault intercessors with a Judicia. They can do a real number on immortals. Yeah. Um, so, so can the Terminators. You know, like, if you get that unit into a squad of Immortals, uh, it's sure. Gladius, so you're, like, Lance and plus one AP, so now you're wounding Immortals on two, yes. saving on six. Rough. You just want something. Yeah. So, on, on paper, uh, it's a really rough match for me. Sure. Uh, because he's got, he's got the, like, basically the way I look at my games is, um, can I kill Monoliths? Yes. Can I kill Immortals? Yes. If they can kill both monoliths and immortals, then I'm really in trouble. Sure. Yep. They can always lean on the resource they can't kill okay. more heavily. Yep. But when they can kill both, it's... Sure. Lame. Becomes a problem. Okay. So what, so yeah. what was your game so, plan going into it then, thinking of that? It's like, well, you need to you need to start killing the resources that can kill you. So the maybe the lances, or if you can get into that eradicator brick, kill that repulsor. Was that kind of your game plan? Or was it just to try and stay away from him and play around the outskirts of the game? So this was hidden supplies. Okay. Um, I don't remember. I want to say it might have just been taken. Actually, um, I have my card with all the oh, um, rounds. Oh yes, 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 yes. I'm gonna just run and grab. Sure, it. no worries. We're back in one sec. Sweet. Uh, so we're back, and now we have some extra information. We have the um, the lanyards that we got given this year for War Masters, which actually had all the rounds and what missions, what deployment types you had for each one. It's really quite excellent. Very, very well and done. And the times. And the times, which is also like for 40k players, yeah. never knowing when a round's supposed to start, it was actually yeah. very, very helpful. So yeah, so what was the, the mission this round? The number of TOs that have taken their lives because of people saying, <laughs> when's the round start? When's the next round? Check the player's yeah. pack. There's definitely age But them. I'm that guy. Like, when's the next round start? That's me, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we had uh, take and hold and supply, search and destroy. Okay. <coughs> So extra objectives, so you can kind of guarantee some decent primary this this mission. Yep. Yep. If you can hold the center, it's twice as valuable. Yes. <clears throat> so you can functionally have, you know, a unit holding two in the center. Yep. And it's super good. Yep. Um, so in this match, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so the, the map was also pretty rough for me because Search and Destroy tends to have reasonably narrow alleyways between what is normally like a reasonably large piece in the center yeah and sort of almost quarters on the outside mm -hmm. um so so the vast majority of the decision to stream apps you can't move monoliths through the board very well okay um which sucks sure but it's like um yeah, so going into this matchup, I, I was worried, um, and I and I have played Tony before, and I know you know he's not like like the world's best player, but he is a good player who knows his sure. army well, yep. uh, absolutely like well enough to to beat me in this match. Yep. Um, so I had to play super good, uh, and yeah, there are a couple of lines that I found. Like at one point, he moved some of his guys up into a building. Um, but left like one of their shoulder pads sticking out, so I right. I flew and shoved a monolith so that part of it was on this piece of the terrain, and so it, then the rest of it was over here, so it could see through the terrain right. into the back of the squadron. Yep. Um, you know, like those are the kind of lines that I'm looking for. Wow. Um, you know, to, to to try and win the game. Um, any 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 holes, any gaps, any lines that I can find. Um, and. He controlled the mid board for most of the game, mm -hmm. um, and I had been, you know, I, I don't think I had lost many resources. I was um, trying to kill some stuff, um, trading well, 
and then I, I want to say it was probably like turn three or something. Um, we had killed some of the tanks, and uh, he still had the aggressive brick. He had rapid ingressed um, a unit of Deathwing into the center, on the, on the two objectives in the center, okay. to score himself an extra 10 points of primary, which was good. Mm-hmm. I was trying to get up there to block that play, um, but it was a, I think it was either a hex mark or a Royal Warden advance fell short, sure. and I couldn't couldn't screen the center out of a deep strike or a rapid. Yeah. Um. So he got that, unfortunately, uh, which is a player that I often quite like to do is rapid ingress the hex mark on an objective and score it on my turn. Sure. Yeah. Um, but you know, um, so it was it was it was reasonably drawish, and I started to push to a to a win. Okay. And it, and it. And I and the sort of the way I was looking was I would take the center off him, uh, like I I put this monolith out, um, we kill we wipe one of the bricks of the terminators, or or we brought the other one out I can't yeah. quite remember. Again, was was, well, I, was this one of the missions it, where obviously we were talking about it earlier? The ignore modifiers has become very valuable because the the terminators. Yeah. Yep. I, I I know that I used it. At, at one point mm-hmm. to um, on, on one turn where I attacked the Terminators okay. um, and then stopped back again but um, I didn't get to use it for, the, for all of the game because um, he did a really good play where um, basically I was going to move the Silent King up I was going to charge the Eradicators they were too far away from the Impulsor to get back in Big. Yep. Um, and I moved them up bait, trying to bait out his um, reactive move. Okay. Uh, and what I forgot was that eradicators get full rerolls to hit, wound, and damage against vehicles just always. Yes. Uh, and he overwatched, and he got something like six or seven wounds out of it. Um, sure. Yeah. A bit nuts. Yeah. And just one tap the silent game. Excellent. So we're both in here's. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. Big. It's Big. Um, so by that point, like he had, he had killed a monolith with the eradicators, and I'm like, cool, now that piece is in play. I, that's the last thing I need to kill to kind of just secure the board. Yep. And then um, the Silent King, which needed to come up and do his job, didn't do his job, he died. Uh, so I was like, huh. So by that point, basically, we, 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 we played that out a little bit further. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then it was, um, was going to be a tie. Okay. Or at least he had done the math and thought it was going to be a tie. Yeah. So um, we ended up. Um, he drew like some secondaries in his last turn. And was like, okay, I can get this many points for this one, this many points for this one. Yeah, it's probably going to be a tie. So he decided to redraw one of the cards to see if he could push it to a win. Okay. Uh, on reflection, there was no card that he could have drawn that would have made it a win. Right. And what actually happened was he went from having behind which he could very likely have very likely have yep. got the five points yep. to drawing um, an uh, overwhelming force, which he's like, cool, well, I'll get five points on that too, so it'll be a tie. And I said, well, I don't actually think you will get overwhelming force for five points. I think you can get it for three. Okay. So we rolled it out, uh, and the last thing he had to kill on an objective was an overlord, which survived on one wound. Oh wow! So that so it was uh, the, the closest of close games in the end, right? And and the, and that getting getting the extra two points for that secondary would have made it a tie. Mm. Um, and so it, it kind of got a little um, unpleasant there because he kind of wanted to go back to his original objective, saying if he had done the math, he would have known and. The judges end up getting involved and making a call that you you know you can't. Yeah, he's already gained know, the information of knowing what he drawn, back. right? So like you can't yeah, then go back on it. So right. yeah. yeah. Um. So because I, I only won that game because of a mistake that he made. Sure. Yeah. Uh, which was fortunate, but I mean, going into going into the match, I wasn't super confident with it. Like he has all the pieces that scare me. Yeah. It's a bad map. So coming out of that with a win, I was like. Sweet. Awesome, yeah. Great way to I start day two. That might well have been, you know, the end of my War Masters yes. free, but wasn't. Yes. Yeah. Now, yeah, well, well done putting a, a um, what, what should have been probably like a 15-5-ish, a because it's just the, everything bad for you, into 
a win. Awesome mm. effort. You know, very, very, very cool. Yeah. I, I don't know if I would, like, the, the thing about that match is he can't push super hard. Okay, especially on this mission so, specifically, right? Because take and hold, like, you're yeah. getting your primary, basically, no matter what, right? Like, Yeah, and, I mean, so he was Gladius, so there's a lot of flexibility in Gladius mm-hmm. with advance and shoot for back and shoot. Yeah. Um, so, but, but he still has relatively slow-moving units. Mm. Uh, and if he tried to push, I, get, I can pick off better, yep. and then I can push a differential. So... He he didn't he didn't go to play aggressively. Yeah, played for his triangle, which was the right play mm-hmm. to, to to do, um, and it almost paid off. Yeah, um, but of course that little mistake at the end. Sure. Um, but yeah. Well, well done on that one, and another win. So again, still on the the pathway to get into Shadow Round. So yeah. uh, must be feeling pretty proud of yourself right now. Like three wins in yeah. a draw is a pretty pretty impressive uh, score. It was it was it was a bit of sweet. Like it got a bit, you know, yep. salty at the end of the game. It was unfortunate. Yeah. At but... games at that level, I think that's just a given. You know, people are yeah. they put a lot on the line at these kind of events, right? Like same as like a Las Vegas yeah. Open or something like that, or one of the GW, like the uh, World Championships of Warhammer. They put a little bit more expectation on themselves. So when they make a mistake, it can be like a feels bad, even though both p- p- players did play as well as they could. It's just yeah. you know, it's it's just a tough. It's, it's it feels bad, but it's also like well, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. And I, I, I saw him again later in the event when we had a catch up. Mm. Um, it was really brief, just like a "Hey, how's your round?" Yeah, yeah. good. You know, yeah. Um, and it was good. Cool. So right, excellent. I, yeah. uh, there was no hard feelings yes. about it. I think, you know, if I was in the same position that he was in, and I had, I, I would feel pretty rubbish for myself. So. Sure. Yeah. yeah. More frustrated at himself though than at you, right? Like this kind of just like. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 So we're always our, our harshest critics to ourselves, so I think that's what it is. So next round, you are into Jeremy Atkinson of, uh, I think he's the co-captain for Team Canada and of Stat Check yeah. fame as well. So he's one of the co-hosts for the Stat Check uh, podcast, and he is playing Thousand Sons. Yes. So the thing about me playing into Thousand Sons mm-hmm. is um, it's it's... It's not a good match on paper. Sure. Because they have the ability, like, Doombolt and Flamers kill Immortals super good. Yes. Um, and you can't stat check, you know, T-Suns, because they'll just... They, they kill everything, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they can be like, cool, you, you give me 10 things to kill, of course, here's 10 dead units. Yep, uh, they've been... Um, Termed quite often as like the 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 damage output army, right? So like because they can just whatever, A lot of yeah, yeah, whatever whatever they need to kill, they can kill. Um, yeah, yeah. But with the exception of Magnus, super fragile. Yes, like, yes, just marine, marine bodies, body. right? Like super easy yeah. to kill. So this I remember it was Purge and yes. um, Smoke and Mirrors tipping point. Okay, okay. so the, really the only main thing was Purge. Mm-hmm. So I, I went I went into this game again thinking this would be the end of my run. Sure. Yep. Um, because you know, like I have, I have played T Suns a lot of times with my hypercrit list. I've played them at OTT, uh, which is an event here in Hamilton over the top. Mm-hmm. I played them, um, gosh, them earlier this year or in the last year. Um, you know, look, I, I've I've played T Suns a number of times uh, since the you know since the start of the edition, so I know them really well. Yeah. Um, which is really, it's a really big benefit. For sure. It's, because... it's a very technical army, so understanding the moves that they can make means you can plan your moves around what they can do to counter you, right? Yeah. So having that understanding in 40k in general, it's one of the biggest things that I try and preach is trying to, you have to understand your army first, that's the most yeah. important thing, but then the next thing is actually understanding how your opponents are going to, will want to play the game. And if they don't play it to how you think and it's worse, great, you can capitalize on that. But if you're always planning for the best moves that they can make, you're you're always in the best like position. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like, especially in terms of um, like the style of Tsun's list, obviously there's you know they're, they're using more Mutalith beasts now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think this army was a more 
was your common yes so running through the list quickly we have uh two exalted sorcerers on disc uh three infernal masters one with arcane vortex one with the teleporty crystal uh magnus and a thousand sun sorcerer with lord of forbidden law to do the double up on cabals one two three four units of rubrics two vortex beasts two units of cultists and a unit of enlightened so very pretty much the stereotypical thousand suns list you've been seeing at the moment um and just checking what was lord of forbidden law on again uh lord of forbidden law was on the thousand sun sorcerer just the normal foot sorcerer just the normal foot guy yeah, yeah. okay so this match um as i said look i, I didn't expect to do super well in it mm-hmm. um but i think purge can be good sure uh i think it, i think it can be a bad match mm-hmm. for for t-sons um like there are plenty of worse things but into my yep. list in particular where you know you have to if you want to get a monolith you have to commit a lot of units to do it mm-hmm. uh, you'll do it yeah um yeah so it's essentially how it played out was some light skirmishing at the start which is how most of the games i play sure. start out yep um he put a uh, he put a vortex beast up into the center and i um but he, he, he did put it in such a place where i could see it from basically my back line and be within 24 inches on my oh back line. okay yes which i, I think i it w- was a mistake mm-hmm um because it, what it meant was that i can get one of his resources from complete safety yes yes because um, also one of the issues with thousand suns is their range isn't the greatest right so like they need yeah. to get close to you so if you can stay away from them and you have the speed to get back to them whenever you need to you can really like stop that damage from coming at you yeah yeah so when i play that match you know i i play i really have to play the pickoff game yeah Yep. Um, and so, I think, so in this particular match, um, I yeah, so I got that middle of beast. He had he had sent a um, exalted on disc up sort of through one of the walls on the side of the board to an area where I was in, so that he could mm-hmm. use it to try and. Um, I'm not sure whether he had no prisoners or whether he had. Um, whether I was doing an action, I can't quite recall. Yep. But for some reason, he needed to come over and kill like a royal warden that I had behind some crates. Okay. And wanted to kill some units off my home objective. Mm-hmm. Um, he doom bolted, did one damage, because um, he rolled the one, did like this deep three or something or whatever it was. He didn't do enough damage to kill what he doom bolted, and then he shot and charged. I think the royal warden who just tanked it all. Right. So very unlikely that um that those units lived mm-hmm. uh, but then they did and i'm like cool now i just got a sorcerer right yeah which is huge because uh, every piece for a thousand sons army is actually quite important yeah obviously with the with the gabal point system that they have yep. when that tank starts to run empty it hurts yep. you know, when yep. when your army rule requires your units to be alive it's tough when they're dead <laughs> you know, when half your army's gone yes you know the the remaining half of your army is suffering yes um, because there's a special place that i like to call no more double doom bolt yeah and that's when they hit 13 cabal points yeah very much so <laughs> 13 cabal points <laughs> no more double doom bolt. um and we're pretty happy once we hit that spot yeah no, very um, much so. so yeah so what ended up happening was um he then committed his um umbralophic crystal unit into the same place that i had just killed that infernal master on disc okay by the uh on disc to shoot me off um a home objective so i wouldn't score that mm-hmm. and i wouldn't score 10 which i think i had that turn right. um and then also he could use the indirect stratagem to have um magnus shoot at a monolith indirectly from a really safe place behind a piece of terrain yeah so basically on that particular turn he spent um four cp for magnus so it was bonus range 
four rerolls, and then two for indirect. And um, the exalted sorcerer, the exalted, um, the infernal master unblifted unit was there, and they shot into. Um, I think I had a destroyer and a, probably some death marks on my hand deck him. Yeah. And he he left. I want to say the destroyer alive on one health. Or oh, so like, he was just catching every break in the worst way possible. Yeah, I mean the. There was a lot of split firing going on, um, yep. and I think, like, despite the fact that mathematically the split firing should have worked, mm. you always ask yourself what happens if it does. Yes. Yep. You know, can I afford to leave that alive or that alive? And the order that you resolve what you're doing is is more critical, right? Yep. Because if you if you if you have an order of priority for killing the resources. <coughs> And you don't start with the most important thing. You can find yourself having to like, well, running out of damage when the thing that was actually the most important is still alive. Yep. yep. So that's essentially what happened there. Was was Magnus shut up this monolith? He did some damage to it, um, not much. Like mm-hmm. Magnus indirect shooting a monolith is, you know, hit and miss, right? Like because you're hitting on fours with four rerolls. Yep. And then it's how many sixes do you roll? Yeah. Because, yep. um, you know, the, where he doesn't get dev wounds, I'm saving on threes and fours mm. against damage two and the damage three, respectively. Yeah. Um, I'm in cover, that's twos and threes, but obviously the, the end of extract gets you. Ignores cover, yeah. Yep. Can't wait for that to go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. But, um, yeah, so look, I mean, essentially he, he initiated a couple of trades. It didn't pay off for him, and I just punished him for it hard. Yep. And you can um, see that with the score at the end of this game, right? Like yeah. The 15-5 to you. Well done. Again, another hard matchup for you, and you're able to capitalize on some small mistakes, like that split fire, a couple of positioning mistakes early with the Vortex Beast, and you can just flip that. The Search is also a, diff- a difficult uh, mission to get a big differential on, uh, often, because it's just so easy to get your 32 primary... Uh, because of kill and hold one, yeah. hold your home field and kill something every turn, and you're getting a decent primary. So being able to push that quite large is <coughs> really well done. I think it's especially against the army that can kill things consistently every turn. <laughs> so like, making sure. Yeah, it, it, it's it, it is rough. Yeah. Like the the immortals die so easy to that. You know, like it's it's one activation kills the unit. Yeah. Right. You can doom bolt them to make sure. You can double doom bowl if you if you need to, and then you just shoot them. Yep. Uh, and you just kill so easily. Yeah. Now, but yeah, very well done. You must be feeling over the moon right now. A couple of tough matchups in a row, and you're still being able to pull them both out. And you have one more yeah, round to. It was really good. Yeah. Um, and then we went into round six. Yes. And round six, the the base of the the emotions that I had here was I saw round six and I saw I'm playing against Blood Angels. Yes. And I thought, okay, well, you know, we've had a good run, you know. <laughs> I've beaten the Dark Angels, I shouldn't have beaten them. I've beaten the T-Suns, I shouldn't have beaten. Yeah. And here is Blood Angels, which is another army that I struggle against because they just come up and they just punch them on yep. to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the Gladius, was, Gladius Blood Angels list, though, isn't it? Was Gladius, which is still fine because yep. you've still got that Lance and, you know, Lance and, and plus AP. Uh, bonus AP. Yep. You. Um, but that's all the list, and I was like, hey! <laughs> okay, so what have we got here? We've got Lamartis, uh, Lieutenant with Combi Weapon, uh, just a basic Intercessor Squad, two Bow Predators with Flamers, uh, the 10 Death Company that are going to go with uh, Lamartis, uh, uh, two Gladiator Reapers, three Predator Destructors, two Units of Scouts, and two Vindicators. Okay, so this is a... Uh, an Iron Storm so Plus bad, as bad, Gladius. Bad angels, black team, uh, Interesting. Uh, angels, okay. Black He's obviously done well to get to this position, so you got to give him respect where it's due. Like, obviously yep. the list is performing well. Yep. It must have been. And I put my army, you know, I brought my box over and he saw the Silent King and two monoliths and was like, oh. Yes. Not idea. But I guess the, the Vindicators are still okay in that matchup and the Lamarty's Brick can be an issue for you, right? Because, like, the Rapid Angus... Because it, 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 it obviously comes up from rapid ingress, and that's exactly what he did. Yep. Yep. Um, but so I got turn one again, annoying. <laughs> but he has so many vehicles yep. that a lot of his vehicles were just where I could see them. Right. Okay. So 
um, so I, you know, I measure everything out, and then I get first turn. Okay, so we know what we're doing. This monolith moves onto this terrain piece, and something moves up to here, and we shoot out, and we kill. Um, the, the objective here is to kill either, as soon as we can, both Reapers, yep. or both um, uh, the Demolisher Cannon uh, Vindicators. Vindicators, yes. Because, again, this is the list where he can kill both monoliths and flayed ones. So if we take out the Vindicators, he doesn't have any shooting to do it with. If we take out the uh, Repulsors, then his, like, his next best is like the Baal Flame Cannons, which is very good, but doesn't one-shot on a model unit. Yes, yes. If they teleport away, they regrow, they can keep doing their shit. Mm-hmm. Um, so he moved out. Um, so yeah, so turn one, I just moved a monolith up, shot with it. Here's a couple of sixes, cool tank, tank does. Oh. Right away. And that's a theme for this. This is that is a theme for this this map. Right. So every a monolith shot, it kills. Okay, well that's, that's a that's a positive start, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and I mean, uh, shooting a toughness ten vehicle with oh, ten or eleven wounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, eleven um, wounds. Yeah. Eleven wounds. Yeah, with a monolith with zero ones from Zarek, uh, for, from Zarek and yeah. kills kills that vehicle, but. It helps when you just roll a lot of sixes. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's just like before, just roll four ups, just roll sixes, and you, you're fine. <laughs> Every time this game uh, that I point at a monolith at a, at a car, the car dies. Yeah, very nice. Well, uh, good. Okay. And so, basically, his turn two, he shot all the predators. He shot basically everything he had into the one monolith that I had used that first turn. Mm-hmm. And he, and he took it down to maybe like half health. Okay. Wow. Um, so I was like, sweet. Like, now everything's exposed. Um, you know, all the, most of the stuff went on fives. So only one of the Vindicators could have, could have shot it. Oh, uh, no, okay. the Vindicators shot it. But, yeah, we were just like, we're going to tank all this and be fine. And we were. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so then that turn we moved up. We, we shot both vindicators they both died mm-hmm. i used some immortals to charge through a wall and we meleeed a bar predator on an objective with the overlord yeah uh who all his hits and then rolled five five six on the wounds uh, and then one failed wound who's on an objective we rolled this another five oh. so, um and i had already hit it with like a min here turn one so it was on like five health or something so that died wow we picked up like four tanks that turn that on turn two. Crazy, okay. Um, rapid ingress to Lamarty's brick. Yep. We were expecting it would. Yep. Yep. Um, and um, I didn't leave, like, with that coming in, and then I oh, had to spend for, so, for an invol mm-hmm. um, because he used Devastator Doctor in turn two. Right. And gave him the. Um, Ignores cover and plus one. The storm of fire strat. Yep. yep. Yeah, on a on a vindicator. Mm-hmm. So we ended up spending two CP to try and keep a monolith alive, uh, re-rolling the wound, uh, re-rolling the, the so popping up the invol mm-hmm. to stop it from saving on fives. Yep. Uh, and then re-roll the save there as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of spent on my monolith, on my CP to keep the monolith alive. Didn't have enough CP to recall the immortals, so he killed them. Yep. Uh, um, and then the uh, Lamarty's brick that a rapid ingress flew over and landed pretty much point blank where I had the monolith, I had, had the Silent King, the damaged monolith behind him, and then a full health monolith next to him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he shot me with some pistols, took some health off, didn't kill anything, and then charged me on the four. So he, multi-charged you i, I was actually there for this this uh charged. this but he multi-charged uh silent king and one of the monoliths but the two monoliths were what two inches away from each other basically everything was more or less touched. yeah yeah so 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 um where he we had this this was entirely intentional by the way <laughs> totally. um, yeah. but when he charged the silent king the the model because he, he rolled a four, it was not enough for him to go around the Silent King and get to the damaged monolith behind him. Right. 
Um, so he kind of had to go over the Silent King to end with an engagement range of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but the four was, we were looking at it and we we're like, look, I don't think it's actually enough to like clear this thing here and still be in coherency because you only have one model. Yep. Um, who can get to that spot and then you'll be out of coherency and so you can't go over me to take the damage monolith, you can't go around me to take the damage monolith, so he rerolled the charge and he got a four again. Oh. So and that's game right there, right? Could have put a model so that he had two models in coherency mm. was in engagement range of the monolith that he did not charge. Yeah. That's rough. So um, we ended up calling a ref over because it was really close and we wanted to be super accurate. Yep. Um, and we basically we showed him where everything was, where it could get into, which the maximum it could move. Um, and I was like, look, I, I, I think the charge fails. You can't end in coherency. You can't end while also tagging everything you need to tag. You can't end in this particular spot where you would have coherency because you'll be with engagement range or something you didn't declare as a target of the charge. Yep. Brutal. So, yep, the uh, Lamarty's brick did not move. And Zarek took ignore mods and killed all of them. Yeah. Just, just went up and, hey, that's a nice that's a nice minus one damage. Would be a shame if somebody ignored it. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time in all masters we use that. Yeah. So he conceded like turn three, and I don't blame him because yep. he, like, he had a couple of vehicles left. Lamarty's was dead. Yeah, that's one of the things, yeah. right? Like, it was, it was rough. It was, it was yeah. a rough game. It was round six. Like, he would have had to have a win to even potentially get into Shadow Round. So once he knew he was losing the game, there was no yeah. incentive for him to keep playing it, right? This is a thing that happens a lot of the times at the big tournaments. Like, you're in it to try and get to either to a podium or to a Shadow Round or whatever, whatever your goal is. As soon as you can't hit that in that last round, often people are like, well, okay, like... I, all I can do is take points away from you, which in this in this scenario isn't actually doing anything for me. So like I'm just going to concede now, and then we'll just leave the game as is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's obviously that, that style of list I was pretty comfortable into. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I've got the damage to deal with it, and um, he doesn't have you know great damage to deal with me. Mm-hmm. Um, Needs, you know, he needs the money to make the charge. Yes, yes. Um, and and as, it, as it would have played out, you know, had he made that charge, he almost certainly kills the damaged monolith because mm-hmm. it was on two health. Yep. Um, so power fist. But um, yep. the Silent King was unharmed and he's going to get to the men he is. Um, so the likelihood of him killing both the monolith, you know, committing enough to guarantee the monolith, which is, you know, one or two guys. One guy had died from the indirect yep. from Zarek, you know, any rapid ingress. Um, you know, so he just he didn't have the volume in the unit to kill the Silent King, especially because in this detachment, obviously he's hitting its strength uh, eight. Eight, not yes, ten. not ten. Yeah. Yep. So if he's ten plus one to wound to the Silent King, he's winning on threes. Yep. If he's eight plus one to wound, he's winning on fours. He's got no rerolls. The money's given lethals. That's nice. He's got four rolls to hit. Yep. It's gonna hurt. Yep. But net is you don't kill. Yep. There was a four-up in vault, right? Like, just... What? So you need eight, uh, 11, 14. Yes, you need 14 failed saves at damage two to kill Zarek through his min- uh, minions. Yeah. Or you need 28 wounds, and he had 37 attacks. Yeah, so so un- unlikely, because he would have... Uh, uh, what did he have oath on that turn? Was it the damage monolith, or was it Silent oh, King? Something else. Uh, Black Company get through all Oh, right, of course, there. of course. But he didn't, so he, I think he owed the monolith. Sure, yeah. Or actually, no, I think he owed the immortal unit, and right. that's how he killed it. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, okay. Well, anyway, very well done there. Um, excellent way to finish off uh, day two, or potentially day two. We were at this point, uh, you got a 20 0 this round. But you, we had not, we did not know whether or not you were going to be going into the shadow round. So the shadow round was, would have been a fourth game on the second day, which technically starts at I think eight thirty or nine o'clock and finishes at midnight. So yeah. wasn't ideal. I would have done it. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't ideal if you were into it just because of the tightness and the uh, the WTC main event started the next afternoon. So we didn't yeah. really want John T to be playing until midnight, getting home at one o'clock getting up at 
seven o'clock in the morning to then play in the morning and then play the actual team's yeah, event in the afternoon. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, we were waiting around for a while. Um, I actually stayed with Jonty for a bit and just made sure that I was like, okay, is there anything you need? Do I need to get you food now just in case? And he's like, nah, like, we'll, we'll worry about it if it comes up. And you were very, very chill at this point, which was very cool. But um, Well, yeah. I mean, at that point it was like, you know, either there will or won't be a shit around that I have absolutely no control. Yep. yep. Um, you know, we were, we were watching the, the last couple of scores come in and I think we had... We at first we thought, well, I have a I have a draw, so there must be like undefeated mm-hmm. um, that will be you know mm. playing off. But there was yeah, there was two draw. Uh, there was only two undefeated undefeated players going into yeah. it, uh, which was yeah. Arnold and Alexandra. Yeah, so with only two undefeated, that's when it was like. You might be in Yeah, yeah, exactly. So then, uh, but what they did is they just took the the top two, uh, uh, no oh, losses okay. with a draw and only wins players, just to do the brackets for the the next day for the Thursday morning, which meant, which I'll just scroll down to now. I mean, Jonty came in fifth. You were one. I, how many battle points were you? It was like four battle points. Six, six, yeah, six yeah. battle points. If you had scored six more points in differential throughout your games, you would have been in the in, in the finals. But what an astounding performance either way. Luckily, you didn't have to play the shadow round. There just wasn't a shadow round. They just didn't play it. But uh, an incredible performance, John T. You also got a pretty awesome achievement that you got uh, best Xenos, was it? Just Xenos in general? Yeah. yeah? awesome achievement obviously there was uh, there was a necrons it's in the top best yeah second technically <laughs> second best necrons but you can't win two yeah. prizes so arnold who was necrons in the top cut uh yeah. got second so he already got a prize so then it goes to the next best uh, necrons player which was yourself both playing yeah. hypercrypt so it kind of shows the strength of hypercrypt lists i think but very different style lists very, yeah. very different very. Style, which is also something i really enjoy is the meta at the moment is very open the fact that two very different styles of different lists also the person that won it olivier uh had black templars crusaders right like a list that uh, i think the only draw that he had was against alex our, our team new zealand player round one um and then he just absolutely bodied people uh from then onwards uh which again very unique list it was the only list like it at the event right so really awesome to see this di- these different uh brews that are coming out from different places and the different metas that evolve around these different styles lists but uh what would be your takeaway notes from from war masters specifically like what, what did you enjoy was there anything that you you would want like to improve upon next year any notes on your list oh um no i was really happy with my list yep um you know having having played it now there's nothing that i would have changed awesome. at all in it um, you know, I've, I've talked to some players who are like, oh, you know, I think about running this, I think about running this, and like, oh, that's, you know, you, you, you make it your own, but like, if you, I've had people hit me up and be like, what do you think about this, what do you think about this? The, the list that I bought is the best thing that I could come up with. Yeah. So if I thought there was something better, I'd be playing that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, and, and, you know, like, I'm, I'm always open to discussing things, but, yep. um, you know, like, it, it, it was really good was good. awesome no, um, i'm glad in, in in terms of like the rest of the Warmaster stuff um it's a little bit more chill than teams like mm-hmm. pe- you know like in teams i found people have an obligation to their team and that's how i feel as well right like yep. i don't feel any pressure for Warmasters. yeah i went to each of my Warmasters games just like hey it's gonna play some 40k yeah uh, but you know like round one of wtc Having just finished fifth at All Masters and now in WTC, I'm like, now I'm feeling the pressure. Yes, I, it was the yeah. first time I'd ever seen you yeah. nervous, <laughs> which yeah. is saying something. <laughs> yeah, and, and everyone was coming up to me like, "Oh, John, you you know, you, yeah, you're smashing," and I'm like, "Well, I hope so." Because <laughs> if I don't, oh. yeah. So, but yeah, no, look, it was a lot of fun, and if you if you're going to WTC. I'd absolutely recommend playing Warmasters. Yeah, it's a great time, um, and you know you could run the set your same list. You can run a different list. I yeah. ended up running the same list, mm-hmm. but I was considering playing Tau, and you know just 
Okay. I was like, I'm going to have to paint a couple of bits and pieces, and I'm going to try to try and find a dark strider and sure. yeah, yeah. play the list I wanted to play. So yep. ultimately, I was like, yeah, I'll just submit my my hybrid list. I awesome. know, it, I know, it's a really good standalone list. Mm-hmm. Um, and you proved it, right? Like with your performance, like you went through undefeated with only one draw in round three. Like absolutely stellar performance. No, very cool. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Jonty. I appreciate you. I'll let you get back to your your Sunday afternoon with your dogs. Uh, be very good. Thank you very much for coming on, and hopefully we'll see you again uh, maybe at next next year's WTC. Otherwise, you'll be one of the biggest oh, practice yeah. partners for uh, Team yeah. NZ to make sure that we yeah. can um, uh, pro- prove you right for next year. Like, for, prove that like you're not just the best 40k player in New Zealand. That we can still send a strong team without you. But no, very cool. Um, oh, we, we had a really strong team. We had a great team. I'm not trying to take anything away from anyone else, but uh, I'm just trying to just trying to buff up my friend a little bit. Um, uh, very cool. Thank you very much for coming on, and I'll catch you guys next time, eh? See ya.